Wait, what's this? Is is this color? Are we actually doing something? Oh, what the f So yes, we're still talking values, and yes, we're still living in this I Love Lucy black and white world right now. But bear with me, what we're talking about today is we're going to be looking at how light affects different surfaces differently. Um, there's no better way to say that, but it's just simply what it is, right? So I talked about this before, um, and I talked about this last week, I think, when we were looking at the ceramic figures or whatever they were made of, of the portraits and the torso um, and stuff like that, and how light and shadow are not going to always look the same on every surface. You have smooth surfaces, rough surfaces, reflective surfaces, dull surfaces, um, all these things, and they come from different types of materials. It could be skin, metal, wood, plastic, ceramic, whatever it is, they all react differently to light. So there is no one cure all solution, right? So we want to kind of be aware of that, at least to a certain degree in our work. Um, you don't need to really go overboard with this but it is something that you want to consider. So I'm not going to go too far into explanation in this video. I do want to just kind of make this video about the actual drawing, but just a really, really quick recap for anyone who hasn't seen the last videos. As you can see here, um, even when we have different shapes, the light affects the shape differently, right? So, you know, you have a different kind of shadow shape going on in a sphere as you do a cube. Although light reacts to different surfaces differently, we want to still be considering all these principles, right? So we have our highlight, light source, shadow side, we got the core shadow in there, reflective light going on, and then a little bit about the cast shadow. No matter what surface it is, it's going to have these elements existing in it. It's just how prominent or not prominent those different sources are going to be. And just as a awesome example of what I'm trying to talk about here, um, here's our 2D2, and even if we look at him in black and white, you can tell there's different surfaces on him. His head is shiny, his body is dirty and matte, and whatever material it's made of, it's not as metallic and shiny as his chrome head, right? And you can see that represented by the light. So the light is hitting him the same everywhere. I mean, he might have multiple light, light sources here, but you can see that his head is definitely shinier and more reflective and brighter than any part on his body. So this is what I'm talking about, and this is what we're going to be applying today. First up, we have a metallic object. Now, a lot of you guys might be panicking, right? Uh, metallic, shiny, reflective, this stuff kind of seems a little daunting at first if you don't really know how to handle it. But um, an old mentor of mine once kind of taught me, and this talks a little bit about color, but we can think of this in light and dark, um, where you're gonna have one side reflecting blue and you're gonna have another side reflecting earth tones or like a brown. Now, this isn't necessarily always true. It, this could be 100% different, but the idea here is basically um, if you have a metallic reflective object out in wherever you are, right? The ground that you're usually on is gonna be some sort of dark, probably reflecting the sun kind of a, an appearance. So you're gonna get a yellowish or warm or brownish kind of hue coming off below. And then you're gonna get the reflection of the sky coming on the top. So that would be blue, right? So you have a cooler side and a warmer side, and this is gonna get you a pretty believable reflective surface. But if we're thinking about this in black and white, it's still readable as a reflective surface. Now, what we have is a little bit just more of a shiny highlight over here, and then the highlight over here becomes a little duller. The reason we have two highlights is just because it is so reflective that it is picking up light and any reflection coming off the ground, but you do have that nice deep core shadow right here separating the two, and you can see that this is really just kind of a gradient going from a dull light to a dark. Now, what you also want to look at too when you look at these values is if I come in here and color select this lightness and put it over here, you can see we can barely see that because it's kind of the same lightness as that background. If I come over here and select this highlight, boom, you guys see how this is definitely lighter and more readable. Um, you can't even see the one right there, right? So don't let your eyes trick you. Remember, value relationships are still a thing. 
and you don't want to have anything lighter than your highlight. We still go back to the basic principles every time. And just a quick side note here, um, not all metal reacts the same, right? So we're talking about different surfaces, so we have to remember that there are different surfaces within surfaces, right? So a little bit of an inception kind of thing going on here, but so you have more of like an aluminum body right here. We can see it has like a really big ultra shine to it. And then if we look down here, we have a really dull, probably used rivet. It's been, you know, used in whatever kind of hardware it's been going for. So it's dull, it's beaten down, it's not as shiny or polished. And that's what we're looking at here. So remember, just because something is metallic doesn't need it mean it needs to be super, super hyper shiny, reflective mirror kind of material. Um, but it does have similar properties across the board as well. All right, so jumping straight into this, everything we're drawing today is going to be a cylinder, by the way, as you probably saw by the diagrams in the beginning. So that makes it a little easy for us. Just a little tip for how I do cylinders here. I always just kind of draw a perfect rectangle and then I'll put a line down the center or what I can just kind of guesstimate as the center. And that helps me to find where the round point of the bottom or the top, it just kind of bends, right? So that way you don't have like a weird lopsided looking um, cylinder, tube, whatever. Um, it helps me, maybe it'll help you guys too. All right, so first things first, I have my background tone, but obviously this cylinder is much darker than its background. So we're gonna lay in a tone. I suck a little light at first. We're gonna push a little darker. So that's up to you guys if you wanna go darker right now. If you're using a material where you can lift out of pretty easily. If you're using pencil or something, I recommend going light like I'm doing now. As you guys can see too, I try my best. If you guys are watching these and wondering like, why doesn't he just use the fill tool? I try my best to make sure you guys can work along with me. Um, so hopefully me filling these things in kind of old school style gives you guys time to fill them in too. So the first thing we're gonna throw in on our shaded in cylinder so we're going to throw in that deep dark core shadow and we're going to throw in our highlight these are the two most important and prominent parts of a reflective surface and i want them to be set and placed before i jump into anything else they don't need to be perfectly placed and set like you don't need to start measuring out the reference image and all that stuff um, just place them in a about correct zone so what from here i'm just kind of following my reference um, again this is a surface kind of like when we look at glass later, it's a surface that's gonna look different depending on every light source that we see. So I threw in a couple extra reflections next to the highlight, and now I'm going in towards the core shadow. And one of the things that makes that core shadow so dark is the, the stark brightness next to it. Now I wanted to show you guys if you can see my two swatches there next to it, and there's a, there is a color right under. So you see something that looks like white, and then right underneath it, it's like a lightish beige kind of color. Um, that is the difference between the highlight and the secondary reflective highlight on the left side. So you can see there's quite a value difference, even though those are uh, one's white and one's a color, you can see that one is much, 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 much um, duller or more gray and the other is much brighter. So we don't wanna accidentally put two stark, bright contrasting highlights on our cylinder here or it's not gonna look perfectly reflective. So I place that in, now I'm coming in and making the center much darker to kind of push that shadow sided shape. And again, I'm just gonna play up some of the highlights. So you can see that you have a prominent highlight in your picture, but then there's other sections in your picture where it's catching some light right next to that highlight. Um, again, it's just a reflective surface, so it's mirroring what's in front of it and what's near it. And then you can of course go in and add in some streaks of darker like I did in the center there. Um, and there's also a nice little reflective-ish kind of highlight right to the right side of that core shadow, if you guys can see it. So I threw that in as well. And I'm just gonna kind of darken in some sections and sharpen up my picture a little bit. From here, it's pretty much done, but we can definitely add a little bit of gravy on top of this mashed potato dish right here. Um, and what I mean by that is I'm gonna go in, it's a reflective object, so the ground is reflecting, and so I'm going to lighten everything from the bottom a little bit. It's reflecting the table and it's on a stark white table basically. So we definitely have a nice reflection in there. So you can see in the bottom of the core shadow, I kind of picked up some of that darkness. I pushed it back a little bit. It's still dark on top, but at the bottom of my cylinder, I pushed it deck back a little bit. So here's our finished product and we're gonna move on to wood. So now that we've tackled metal and metallic reflective objects, let's look at something that is pretty much the polar opposite, 
which is a natural wood surface here. So, you know, we have our cylinder, but we can see that this is definitely not a smooth cylinder that we're used to, right? This is not gonna be one of those regular kind of smooth surfaces or the plastic or ceramic cylinders that we've studied in some of the still life stuff that we looked at. Um, we do have the basic principles going on. So if I throw this in black and white, we do still kind of have the light side switching to the dark side. If you guys can see on the left side there, you do have that darker shadow shape and then it is catching reflective light. So again, these principles still work, but you can see we don't have anything like a really, really stark in your face highlight. We don't have a super obvious core shadow going on wood naturally it's just a little more of a duller surface not always i mean obviously you have things where wood can be super polished and finished and it can be a little shinier and uh you know a little bit more fixed up and nice but if we're talking about natural wood that occurs out in wild that's you know just something that's been cut straight off of a tree well it has a duller surface it also has a rough and textured surface so you're not going to get the shiny smooth barbie leg kind of a look right you have something that kind of dully goes from bright to shadow, catches a little bit of reflective light. So you're not looking to push this like you would be pushing something that's metallic or shiny like plastic. You really just want to have almost like a gradient effect going from light and then it slowly gradients into that shadow side. All right, coming off of our reflective light drawing, especially we got to think about pushing this back a little bit. Um, so again, you know, I have a big block of wood here, so I'm just going to find my center. A little trick if you guys haven't seen my perspective videos is to do an X in your box and then where those X's, the two lines join, that's going to be the center of your square, your rectangle, whatever it is that you're drawing on. Um, another thing guys, when you have a situation like this where it looks like the top is flat, what we need to know is that in proper perspective, it's not going to be flat. Yes, it looks like that. Yes, it is that. But as artists, we need to be able to kind of cheat things where we can. So you need to make the decision here of, do you want to not be able to see the top? Kind of like the reflective cylinder where it was like a round hill at the top. Or do you want to be able to see a little bit of the top? You got to make that choice. It's going to always look better. If you just make it flat, it's going to flatten out your, your cylinder, unfortunately. Um, there's no real way around that. So make the decision there just kind of like I did. I, I showed a little bit of the top of it. So it's like we're looking somewhat from the top. So coloring this one in a little differently, um, just to kind of show a different method here. I'm going to start with the shadow side and I'm blocking that whole thing in. So you can see me color, 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 and I'm just kind of filling in my shape here. Now, I think to remember here too, is we have a very rustic and natural wood source here. So don't be afraid to go rough and choppy with this. It's going to look all the more real, all the more natural. So what I did was I color selected that light area off of the um, log there, and then I just changed it back to black and white. And it turned out to be the exact same value as my background tone that I already have, which is that light gray. And so then I just kind of started to push that into the shadow shape. Remember it's rustic, it's like um, that bark is kind of creating a carved in look. So scratchy and linear is completely fine. So going in and just kind of throwing in the basics of what I need, right? The principles always exist. So threw in a little bit of a uh, reflective light there, gave it a good reflective light, and I'm throwing in and push, um, not pushing it too far, the value of a core shadow. And if you guys see those spots off to the left, those are my swatches, just because in case I need to go back to a certain value, they're there, I don't have to kind of guess. So now this is kind of going a little extra. We don't need to go this far, right? But if you guys do want to do textured wood, Here's gonna be my little tutorial on it. And I'm gonna say this straight off the bat, I'm not a professional at this at all. I don't sit around drawing wood and logs all day. So take this with a grain of salt. But anyways, you wanna draw in the pattern that you see or that you wanna see. Do not, do not get stuck trying to copy the reference that you're looking at um, square per square. It's just never going to work out that way. It's just too complicated of a pattern and shape going on. So you always wanna do your own thing. Now I'm just kind of going random shapes here, you know, lines going up and down. And you also want to remember too, that when you have a light and a dark side, you're going to have more of your dark information in the dark side. 
So because the light side is going to start drowning out and kind of doling some of the effects of some of these um, bark pieces. So you want to make sure that you're not overdoing the light side with this information and mainly keeping it in the dark side, which is why I drew a little bit in the light side. Um, and now what you can do too is you can always come back with the value that you're building on top of and push it back. So you can see here I'm pushing it back quite a bit because I don't want it to be looking like I drew a cylinder and then now I just drew like black lines on top of it. Um, that's not the look I'm going for. I want it to be a part of it and really make it feel nice and natural and rustic. So I'm just going to keep building up my pattern here. And what I'm going to eventually do is I'm going to pick one of these lines going down nice and, and dark. And I'm going to draw it out for you guys. I'm going to explain how to draw what is essentially kind of engravings in something, right? And now this works for what you see here, like bark, or if someone carved into the side of some bark. Um, this works for any kind of like valley-ish kind of thing. And I'm talking about like, if you were up close looking at someone's wrinkles and you're doing a value study of like, let's say like an old man or something like that, this also applies to how you're going to handle the value and the shadow shapes of wrinkles as well. So that being said, I'm just going to push this back, kind of go in and kind of make sure I keep my linear texture. You can see I kind of added like some really scratchy lighting effects on the reflective light side. And I can throw in a quick little highlight there on the top um, just to kind of play around and push my perspective here. So getting into the wrinkle idea that I was just mentioning. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a nice dark and confident line in there. So if it was a wrinkle, it would probably be more of a straighter curved line. But here we have a wooden texture, so I'm going for a kind of jagged, um, I don't know, lightning strike kind of a look to it. Just, just looking at my reference a little bit, make it natural, make it kind of obscure. And now what happens when you draw something carved in is that the immediate side of it is going to capture light. Not, I need, I need to make this really obvious, not a highlight. Okay. It's not that bright, but it is capturing some sort of light. So maybe you could go like the reflective light level of brightness here. So what you can see here, guys, is that if you push in that dark value, nice and dark, uh, I'm not going black, but you could push black if you guys wanted to. Um, and then you put that highlight right next to the side. It gives you that appearance of this is something that's carved in, and then this is the surface that's right next to it. And it's not going to look like you just drew a black line on your picture. It gives a sense of that 3D form. Um, hopefully that made sense. We can always go over that again in another video, but I did just kind of want to, since I had this opportunity, I thought I would throw it in here and just kind of give you guys that little tip. Remember, we got our value relationships here too. So if you guys want to, I like to kind of have like a lost edge kind of a thing. So in order to find my edge, I'm just throwing a dark side in here and we have our finished product. Glass is one of those objects that will forever be tricky. It doesn't matter who you are. It's just gonna look different in every single lighting situation. What you wanna understand about glass, especially perfectly see-through glass, there's obviously stained glass and colored glass and painted glass. But if you know, we're just talking about the classicals um, look at glass right here. It's basically about what you're not seeing. So what I'm talking about when I say that is if you guys can look right here and basically in this huge triangular chunk right here, and even further down to the floor and stuff, if you guys can see, it's just giving us a view of what's going on in that background tone. So as we look at this, we wanna remember that we're not gonna be doing something like where we start with a tone um, on our object or something. We do start with a background tone because we do need to have a solid backdrop because whatever that backdrop is, is going to be our information for our glass. Now, glass reacts differently. It does still follow some of the same principles. You can see here, we have a nice highlight, very nice and bright going straight down. And then you can see a little bit of a gradient to darker as it goes around here. And then you can note that this is a little bit lighter than this reflection going on over here, because this is essentially gonna be our reflective light in this category. And then, of course, it just kind of goes into what is going to be glasses shadow shape. But realistically, we don't see that. So if you've never drawn glass before, stick with me. I'm going to show you everything that I do to make this look 
as realistic as possible. We're still sticking pretty rough. Remember, we're just kind of sketching to have fun here. But essentially, you just need a color that's a little bit darker than the background. And you pretty much just need a nice bright color here too. So after you tone in some sort of background shade, you only need those two values. So let's give this a try. All right, so to repeat myself again, the background tone is gonna be king here. So I'm gonna throw in a really quick and a rough gradient. I want you guys to see how rough I'm going because I don't want you guys to have the impression that you have to make things perfect all the time. Um, not the case, not, not the case here at all. I just need something that gradients because I'm just trying to copy my reference here to an extent. So now once I have a surface where it goes from darkest to lightest, I can now play around with the information that I'm being given here. We have a cylinder, um, you know, it's a glass. So I'm just drawing it as a normal cylinder. So same principles that I've been doing. I'm going to find my center. That's gonna give me the roundabouts down here. Now remember, we're drawing glass. So we need to see the full ellipse. Um, you can't just show me the bottom and you can't just show me an open top essentially, right? So we have to be able to see on the bottom of the glass, even though we can't Technically, if this was a, you know, like a colored surface, we wouldn't be able to see in. You have to show that full ellipse now. What I'm doing here is I'm kind of getting a little ahead of myself. I didn't do the full drawing first, but um, it's because, you know, things are kind of lost and found when we're drawing glass. So I'm, I want my information there so I don't start getting lost in this drawing. And so if you guys can see from the left side down to the bottom there and then up the right side, that's basically the darkest information. You know, I'm like kind of doing the iffy hands here, but for the most part, that's the darkest information that we have in our picture. So I'm putting that there. Remember, you can always kick this stuff back. If you're working with pencil, please draw light so that you can always push this stuff back. I'm going to give an indication of my bottom here, and I'm going to push out some of my background lines here. If you guys don't care that this is just a sketch, you know, don't worry about this part but I just wanted to kind of make it as believable as I can for you guys. So we know the bottom of this glass is capturing a good bit of light. The surface below it is nice and light. So we're just gonna keep that in there. So I'm just kind of pushing that surface. Um, and I see that the right side of my glass is a little bit lighter in value than the right side. So I'm also gonna push that in there as well. Now what we need to do is we need to come up to the top and kind of finish that surface. So you guys might not be able to see it um, very apparently, but I am drawing up at the top right now. And it's because the value that I'm drawing with is very, very similar to the value that's up there. So squint your eyes. If you guys can try to keep the values as light as I am, because again, the glass is about drawing the lost and the found. We're trying to see the background. So it's important that I'm drawing with the background color or sorry, the background value because that's my end goal. I want you guys to see through this glass. Now there's parts here where obviously it's capturing some light and you're gonna go ahead and draw those in. Just pay attention to what's brighter and what's duller. The I'm looking at the inside of the cup right now. So the left side was a little bit duller, the right side was a little bit brighter. And then of course the rim is not a dark outline. It's not, you know, don't get out your Sharpie for this one. Um, the rim is a nice white, almost highlighted capture of light here. Now what you have on the side of your surface is a nice rim of light and it goes down and it fades to the lightness of the bottom of the table. <clears throat> so again, don't have it be lighter than the bottom value. Um, I don't know if I'm making this complicated, but I just kind of want to push the idea of it's supposed to be lost and found. So the top of my cup is lighter as it gets towards the, the ground level where the ground level is lighter due to gradient. The, the lightness on the cup essentially fades into the background. Don't worry about not being able to see this. You want this. You want your cup to start disappearing into the background and you want to give as little information as possible. It's going to make it even more believable as a nice, shiny, clean glass. So I'm coming in here and just kind of looking for where I can give that solid, confident information. Um, top right corner there, it's almost black on the picture, right? So I'm going to go ahead in there and make that one of my darkest values. Same with the top left kind of rim. And on the bottom information too, I see a nice little darkness in there. Now I see the bottom of the glass is capturing a good amount of light. And so I'm gonna push that in there and then just kind of smooth it out too. You don't want anything to be too scratchy on glass or it's gonna look like a scratchy glass, you know, like so you want it to look nice and smooth. 
toss in a nice fading highlight. So don't have it go all the way to the bottom, is what I'm saying there. Have it fade down a little bit and disappear. Um, and you, I went in there and brightened my top rim a little bit. And now I'm just kind of adding a little bits of effect. I can see that the bottom of this cup is a little bit lighter, kind of like a reflective metallic surface. And from there, it's all done and we have a finished product. So once I clean this up, there we go. It's shiny, we can see right through it. Yeah, I kind of wanted to sneak this one in on you guys. This was not in the original thumbnail of what we first looked at, but it's the human arm. So skin in itself is a surface, right? And skin reacts differently than plastic. It reacts differently than wood to light. Whatever it is, right? It's not reflective. It's not super shiny, you know, despite what anime tells us. Um, what we have here is something that almost relates a little bit more to wood. It's going to be different depending on skin tones, depending on person per person, right? Um, someone who has a hairier arm, it's going to reflect differently than someone who has a hairless arm, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, you guys get the idea. Here we have a pretty standard baseline. I kind of just looked for an arm that wasn't, you know, muscular or built or anything like that. And what I want you guys to essentially be thinking of is this is just a tapering cylinder. Um, you know, it's like a cone that didn't get, it, it, more like it got its top chopped off, right? You see some elements of play here where we do have this hand doing a cast shadow onto here. So that's what's creating that line there. We do have a nice soft core shadow going through here. But what you get with skin too is a lot of diffuse light to shadow, okay? So you can see that this isn't like a hard highlight here's our mid-tone, here's our shadow, like we've been kind of looking at with some of the classic one light examples. Obviously, we're getting a little more of a daylight example here, so that's why it's somewhat diffused, but also because skin is just gonna naturally have a more dulling, kind of like the wood effect, where it's just gonna transition. So even in here, you can see that this is still lighter than over here. Now, if I turn off our little cylinder example there, you can see that we don't really get too much reflective light. And I think that's mainly due to this surface. Um, but we do see some, you kind of see some reflection within there a little bit as this line right here is kind of a little bit lighter than what's going on on top of it and below it because it's kind of falling into a nice dark deep shadow. All right, so I threw the picture in black and white for us. So it's easier for us to study, right? we can kind of understand this a little bit better, especially since we've been hard at work at our values, right? Now, what I'm doing is essentially just kind of thinking of this as a cylinder with some rounded edges. You guys can completely just draw this as a cylinder shape if you're not confident with your figure drawing yet. You can also check out my figure drawing videos if you'd like to be more confident in your figure drawing. But otherwise here, we're just kind of trying to think of this as quick and essential. I'm not really focusing too much on the rest of the arm or the hand, but I'm gonna draw it in so you guys kind of understand where I'm placing things. So the reason that this is important is because primarily you're probably gonna be drawing humanistic characters. Um, so we do need to know how light and skin interact. This is probably gonna be one of the most common surfaces that you're dealing with, along with clothes. But for the most part, we need to understand what's happening here when light reacts to skin and creates shadow. Like, what does it look like? Is it really hard surface? Is it shiny? Is it you know, uh, Matt, what kind of what kind of interaction do we have going on here? So what you guys can see really is like the easiest way to put down information for skin is to just find your light side and your shadow side. Now, technically, if I was doing some sort of quick figure drawing, I would honestly leave it like this right here. This is plenty of information for me to understand that I know the light is coming from above and there's no light below. Um, that's kind of a spoiler into our next video, which we're going to talk about figure drawing and combining our value studies and shadow shapes with that. But anyways, getting back to this, with the shadow shape, we do have a nice core value going on there. It's a little bit diffused because of the lighting situation in this picture, but it's there. We know it's there. We're gonna add it there because we are artists that understand our values, right? Um, otherwise, you have a little bit of a faded um, mid-tone in there. I'm gonna kind of push back my lines right because uh, when we're drawing realistic we want as little outlines as possible 
So I push back my line into the background a little bit there. And I'm just gonna push into a nice deep darkness right here. We don't get a lot of reflective light because of the carpet. The carpet's just kind of like absorbing that light source and not pushing it back. But again, we're the artist here. So if you guys would like, throw in that hardcore um, reflective light. Pretend it's on a marble surface or something. Like, what does that look like? You're gonna run into these things when you're drawing eventually, right? So practice makes perfect. Um, from here, we don't have too much otherwise. I'm gonna kind of make this a little deeper and darker just cause that's a cast shadow and I wanna inform that. And then a little bit of a highlight. Do not go overboard with this highlight or you will turn this into a Barbie arm. But otherwise, I think we knocked this out pretty good. We made it guys. I hope that this video was helpful and that maybe you guys kind of uh, got a perspective on some new ways of creating surfaces like glass and reflective stuff. I know that stuff is always like really daunting in the back of your mind when you got to draw it, but sometimes it really is just as easy as kind of like analyzing it and looking and just kind of understanding where to place a couple lights and a couple darks. Thanks so much for watching guys. What we're going to do next week is going to probably be the last value video for now. We're going to apply our value skills to some figure drawing. And we're going to see how that goes. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.